Okay, so assalamu alaikum and welcome to my channel. It is Aisha. If you're new here, you are definitely welcome. And don't forget to comment, subscribe, like, and share because I am trying to grow this channel. Yes, that's the reason why you should subscribe. And but honestly, yeah, subscribe because I am trying to grow this channel. So you gotta subscribe, like, and like again some views, and then. Like I will gain 100 views and nobody liking or comment. So please, please, when you do check the video, even if you only watch like 10 seconds, 30 seconds, click the like button. It helps out a lot. It does. It really does. Yeah, it really does. So like the YouTube algorithm or the YouTube people, the top guys, the top guns can um, recommend my videos. So please. Subscribe, like, share, comment, like honestly, please. I am trying to go to this channel. Ramadan has ended and this today is the 26th. So it's been five days since Eid. Do I still wish you Ramadan Barak or do you just say Eid Mubarak? When we eat Mubarak and yeah, you know, my stomach is crumbling right now. Crumbling. But that's beside the point. I had this thought that I want to say, but then I forgot. I remember now. If you're in Nigeria, you'll get this. But if you're not, sit and get the story anyway. You know, sis, see what I'm doing there? Sit that to shower. After Ramadan, after you finish Ramadan and after it, you know that they say that you should do this, this sitta to shower. It's just so funny that, you know, I mean, we're not Arabian. We're not Arabian. <laughs> we're not Arabian. Okay. We're not Arabic and we don't speak the Arabic language, but some of us go to, and my stomach is scrambling again. But some of us go to Ilikil, and if you, if you know Ilikil, Madrasa, where you Madrasa is another type of school, every school that every Nigerian, where every Muslim Nigerian anyway that I know should go. Let me say that every Muslim Nigerian that I know should go. But you know what? Some people do not go because the abuse in this illegal is it should be illegitimate. Like it should be illegitimate, illegitimate. Because I remember, like, I mean, I went to really Kyoto. Like, my madrasa is not... I mean, we still have teachers that will cuckoo beat you. Like, they will bamboo stick. Olosun kutu. If you know sida ukuta. Or the three dark weed. Um, bamboo. And sometimes, I've seen one who starts with whip. Like, the actual whip. That is illegal madrasa for us in Nigeria. Like, but anyways, that's also beside the point. But let me finish this. So, like, if you go to some other illegal, they actually use to weep. Like the weep, you know. I, I I believe they say that the weep is made from cow skin. Like they twist it. You know, some some of these weep have one hand, some have two hands, three hands, four till eight. Some of them actually. Have Eat. I mean, like, I, I gained something from, like, not in my madrasa, but, like, in some other madrasa, I've heard, like, weeps with the students. Like, if they, if they miss one letter, if they misspell or miss, um, pronounce one letter, it's like, why, why? Like, it's very, I won't ever go to those kind of legal, but in my legal today, also, you do, they use it, like, I know some someone actually did use the whip, so the, to the point that um, the mudir in the my madrasa actually had to like call the, this person and say that you cannot be using this because the students are complaining. Even all the, some of the other ustas are complaining about it. Like, why are you like you can be in the other class and you will be hearing children or even adults or even like teenagers crying 
and the whip you can hear the sounds of the whip and it just it's brutal it's you know i feel like though madrasa is not part of like the it's part of the educational system in nigeria but it's still not part of it like most madrasa that i know when i was there was privately owned so it's not like it's government regulated even though the public school which is like the english school that is government regulated they still like beat kids in the school and all those kind of stuff so you get something like that but imagine private and like some ustaz feel like he has the right to beat all the kids in the school in the school <laughs> like it'd be like that sometimes so yeah i know that some people like some students and some children they specifically did not go to madrasa or did not go to Ileko because of the horror stories from this madrasa i mean alhamdulillah for today i learned a lot from my madrasa and i i mean the way that i can read the quran today pray so many things that i actually learned are from this like from this stars and may allah bless them continue to bless them and like overlook their shortcomings but wow them like i know some people that they they skip they drop out they and some actually tell their parents that no i am not going to this illegal madrasa because of the way they beat the kids it's just unnatural I mean, beating kids should be unnatural. I mean, for me, I feel like beating kids is unnatural. You shouldn't do it. Nobody should be imposing that kind of torture on kids, on other human beings, or on other living things, like, really. But people do it. They're like, oh, children need to be trained. They need to be disciplined. Like, they're not the human being. Children are human beings. They are not, I don't even want to say like they're not, yeah, they're not objects. But even you wouldn't do that to an object. Imagine if you can get, um, if you get Hasana for wetting or for watering plants. If you get Hasana for just watering plants. So don't hurt living things or non-living things or whatever. Just be decent, I guess. But yeah, Ramadan hands and Alhamdulillah. As many other women that do Ramadan, you know, we all have our own struggles, especially when your period comes in the beginning of the Ramadan and then at the end of the Ramadan. So, but anyways, I mean, like, I was kind of sad. I, you know what? I was actually sad. <laughs> I was sad. <laughs> And then, um, and then I also I wanted to go to eat, and then I bought this dress, and the dress didn't fit me. And then my situation happened; I had to return the dress anyway. But then I still get to celebrate, so I'll have the life for that. So I still got to celebrate. So this is kind of like a reflection for my dad. Honestly, this video is so just about reflection for Rodan and like t telling you about my, I guess my experience, just Arabic madrasa illegal kind of experience. I didn't know that I was going to go deep into like those kind of illegal experience, but anyway, yeah, bear with me. So yeah, Ramadan hands and what I learned from Ramadan. My reflection for Ramadan is like honestly through the Ramadan is just after a while I start getting sad because before we reached the middle of ramadan i was already getting sad because it was going you know you go online and like people are like just celebrating they're like decorating their house like you're in the mood and it just feels so good and it feels so nice and you wish that the ramadan will extend for like more than a month for any honestly it didn't but well, like I said in so many of my other videos, like honestly, the Ramadan doesn't have to end when the Ramadan ends. Like honestly, it doesn't. I mean, as a woman, you know, we're still going to be doing that fast. Sisters, we are still going to be doing that fast. And there you have it. If you already said that Ramadan has gone and like, I don't know, all these um, shayatins are untied again. There are so many ways to protect yourself. You can memorize the beginning 10 verses of Surah al -Kaf. Do your morning um, and evening zikr. 
the morning and evening daycare too, I learned from my madrasa. Like every time, like we go to madrasa on Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Yeah. Thursday is market day and Friday for Jamaas. So it's like five days for English school, five days for Arabic school. So in English school, we go Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And for Arabic school, we go Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Saturday and Sunday. So the Saturday and Sunday are the days that we go to Ilikil from morning up until like 2 o'clock. So from like say 9 o'clock, we start from 9 o'clock till 2 o'clock. Well, the other days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we go from 4 o'clock till 7 or 7.30. And that's the schedule for the Ilikil. The Askar, for like the morning and the evening Askar, we learned it. I learned it from my madrasa and so every now and then like every morning or every evening or both times I also do it so it's been like imagine if I don't know it imagine because honestly there are so many duas many duas and then I feel like I want to do that I want to do that I want to say that I want to say that I want to say that I want to, <laughs> I want to do that if you don't memorize it it kind of gives you but you can also, you know, you always have to get those timelines on your Instagrams. Honestly, you have those people that actually go out of your day way and say like, share this, and then all those kind of stuff. And you kind of learn it that way. Because honestly, there's so many to us. So many of them. So, so, so many. And there you go. I want to improve on that. And so I'm hoping, I'm praying that I improve and I continue to improve on like learning all this um learning all this dhikr and askar and duas and prayers that you can do like just in the middle of the day you know all this kind of things so it will brighten up your day you know give you so many rewards and yeah and always know that everywhere you go you always have two angels with you like that's the way i can say it like yeah like right now i have Two angels sitting beside me, literally writing down everything, every good thing, every bad thing that I do. You literally have guardian angels. Like Allah assigned you those guardian angels. You know, I used to think that it was it was it's Rocky Benatid, right? Rocky Benatid are the two angels that write your deeds. And the Munkar and Nakir are the ones that interview you or um, ask you the questions in the grief. Like me, Allah make it easy for all of us. I mean, and what's the last thing I want to say? It's so weird because I, lo I lost my train of thought when I was going to talk about the Sita to shower. So the Sita to shower. I heard that, you know, I've always heard that you do this consecutively, like six days consecutively, like right after Ramadan. But I've also heard that you can spread it out, especially, and I think it was Dr. Omar Suleiman that I watched recently, and he was saying that maybe if you have like tons of Ramadan to pay back, like say you have 10, 15 days. And I mean, you have only have 30 days or 31 days. I mean, did you have in shower in the month? Will you be able to do the six days? I mean, they said that you can do the six days first, especially if you have so much you know, to pay back. Then you can do the six days first, but then you have to like kind of calculate that also um, periods. Like honestly, periods kind of dampen things sometimes. Like, Oh, you have like this all this thing planned out and you're like, okay, what if my period comes then I won't be able to do it. See? Like that's the thing that's usually kinda of bug me about that. But I'm gonna learn. I'm gonna probably find a book or read about it somewhere how you can like kinda of structure how you can like do your Madan and pay back to Madan and like still be do still be doing the extras. Like see like the day of Harafa can find the day of Harafa, but you know what? Some of us do not get to 
fast on these days and like the huge thing that happened on this day your sins from previous years and the next year erased or given if you're on your period what happens like what happens and for the again for the sis i keep just going off from the sit tattoo shower because i know like i was going to talk about the sit tattoo shower when like i just dive into my like madrasa experience so the sis tattoo shower i don't know if you've like kind of figure out what i'm saying i mean we're not arabic so especially at like when we be like sit tattoo shower have you fasted your sit tattoo shower but have you fasted your sis tattoo shower can i say it's a tongue tongue twister because it has like so many s sit tattoo shower it's actually sit tattoo um sit tattoo is um six in arabic but the way <laughs> the way like we say it the way we say that like, have you had passed your sis tattoo shower so it's in our sister have you fasted your sis tattoo shower <laughs> i you know one time i was in my in my madrasa and one girl she was just asking other another person that oh you fast just fast your shower from the and then have you fasted your sister to shower like, sister go sister to shower have you fasted your sister to shower <laughs> but anyway yeah, every time I remember this story I always like kind of laugh so I just want to share it. I hope you find it funny too. But if you don't anyways you don't have a sense of humor like I do. Because that's how be funny. If you hear this it's funny. Have you fasted your sister to shower? Have you fasted your sister to shower? Mm -mm. Sister, go. Anyways, and the one last thing that I want to share was that I started the Quran and I wanted to finish the Quran so much. At least this Ramadan, because the last Ramadan I didn't finish. I stopped at Surat al -Namil. I'm pretty sure it's Surat al because Surat al is closer to Surat al Baqarah than Surat al Nahal. I always miss the two together. The the B the hunt the B the hunt, right? The B the hunt. So I think it's Surat al Namel or is it Surat al Nahal that I stopped at? Anyway, yeah, like I said in the other video, it is this surah closer to the Bakara that I stopped the last Ramadan, which is like 2022. So, but Alhamdulillah. This Ramadan, even though I didn't finish, but I'm going to finish because I'm still reading it. I'm going to finish it because honestly, last Ramadan, I stopped at um, Namel or Nahal and I was like, I just got so lazy and I didn't end up, end up completing it. Even though you can still read it, even after you, I mean, reading Quran should be a habit, everyday habit, but may Allah help us through. So, yeah, I wanted to continue last Ramadan, which is the 2022 Ramadan, but I didn't end up continuing. I just kind of stopped it. I mean, I just kind of stopped at the where I, where I ended or where I ended as the Ramadan finished. This Ramadan has ended and I am definitely going to continue reading it till I finish Baccarat. I read Fatia, because Fatia is a Jews by itself. So I think I have about three or two or four Jews left to finish. I mean, Alhamdulillah, I'm so glad that even though I wasn't able to finish, I still go further than last year's. And I ended at Surat al Ma'ida. The. Is it called the table? Oh. Shoots the the table. Oh my god, I, I forgot. But I stopped at Surah Al-Maida, which is the Quran four. It's the chapter four. But yeah, uh, oops, five. It's a Quran five. So I stop at um, Surah Al-Maida, and I am inshallah I'm going to finish it and. Yeah, I'm going to finish it all the way to Bakura. And yeah, so that's my Ramadan reflection. And hopefully, inshallah, may, may we witness many Ramadan really. And inshallah, 
next year I will inshallah finish it completely, completely like finish it from Fatia to Bakura or to Surat of Fatia. But honestly, what actually helps me to finish the grants this time, I've, I said it in my other video too, that it was because I started from the Surat of Nas. Because I know, like, if I start from Surat to Fatia, you know, Surat of Bakura and all those, the beginning surah really they are very dense they are very they are long surah they are long surahs they are like about 200 100 like they're quite long so i felt like the other ramadan that i've tried to like finish the quran like that i always kind of stopped because i felt so tired it's like you're reading you're reading and you're not finishing you haven't even finished one surah that's what it actually kind of that's what I usually kind of get from it, like when reading it, that's what I usually kind of get. But when I started from Surah to Nas, and then I, because you know, you already know all the shorter surahs, so it kind of helped, like, as you complete one, it's like, oh, I want to complete this too. So it moves up like that, and then I was able to actually, like, get so much done. I think by the last two Ramadan, I've, I've read further, like, further more than I have in, like, so many other Ramadans before. Start from small, simple, and then work your way up. And also, inshallah, I pray to continue to read Quran after this Ramadan. Like, be consistent about it. So I feel like when I was reading, the, especially those surahs that I didn't know so much, like I didn't know, like maybe the wording and everything. Like, you know, Alhamdulillah, when I was reading it, I feel like so many words or so many surahs, they are short and they are, and their words are kind of familiar to me. So I, I'm able to like pronounce them and even read them, read them steadily as I should, I think, I believe. But like some of them that I don't know, slow me down. I feel like if I, if I continue reading the Quran consistently, even if I can't do seven days a week, then I do it like maybe three, four, five days, six, seven days, then it will help with my pronunciation and with like how I, with my pacing and with pronunciation and in completing the Quran for next Ramadan. That's the way I feel. I mean, don't get me wrong. I do read the Quran. Um, I have like so many different kind of apps on my phone that I read the Quran from. They recommend Ayah of Din and then I'll read or then I'll just open other ones that because I, I had like this this plan to be reading three Ayah every day. I mean I started and then I I didn't stop but I kind of like just you know you get that peak time and then you drop. Yeah that's what happened. But you know, Alhamdulillah, like I try, I pray, like I say my prayers and try to revise the Quran that way, you know. And even like, you know, trying to like learn new ayah every day. Learn ayah, like new ayah that you don't know. I don't know about you, but I feel like many people just stay around like the juice study for their prayers. But I feel like if you challenge yourself a little bit, you know, you because there are so many other shorter surahs uh, shorter surahs or maybe shorter ayah in the Quran that you can honestly use to say your prayer I feel like that helps with revising and with even learning the Quran and, that, and that's kind of like what I'm kind of what I'm working with right now so just so that the next Ramadan I'm prepared and I can even read way um, steadier faster and complete the Quran Inshallah, so pray for me. <laughs> so yeah, that's my Ramadan reflection. I hope you enjoy this. I hope you like it. Please do not forget to like, subscribe, and share. And salam alaikum. I will definitely see you at some other time. Again, like, share, comment. Please, please. I'm gonna see you already watched the video this far. So why not just click that like button? Because I see that people are watching and I'm like, why are you not clicking the like button? Click the like button. It's just right there. 
even if you can comment or you don't want to share or anything like that just help your sister out help your sister out the like button and share and comment it means a lot and it just kind of tell me that i'm doing something positive something right so that is my Ramadan reflection. I don't know if you want so if you want to share something with me that you learn or that you that has helped you or you want to share I don't know an app. There's so many apps these days. I mean the one that I've been using. I've used the Muslim Pro. Yeah, I use the Muslim Pro, the Quranly, Quranly, and I have another one. Tartio that is supposed to if you read surah so if you read ayah it's supposed to tell you how well you did in pronouncing like in your honest pronunciation and stuff i haven't gotten to use the app but one day i will i don't know how how many like i think i have, I have about four apps on there that i just use for prayer times Quran, you know, you can do, they send like gifts, cards, you know, this one that you can share with Edinburgh. Because I used to design mine, Edinburgh, um, get greetings before, I used to design it, but then when the, once I found out that this app also has it, I was like, you know what, I'm just going to use this, because designing it is actually quite hard, it's tedious too, so. You know, I already finished my video, so why am I even still talking? <laughs> Anyways, so again, like, do not forget to like, help a sister out here. Yeah, don't forget to like, comment, share, and I will definitely see you in another video. Thank you. Salam alaikum. Again, it's Aisha. It's Aisha. It's Aisha. It's Aisha.